Sony has a lot of cameras that can shoot awesome video from small mirrorless cameras all the way to large cinema cameras, but figuring out the best one to get can be a bit challenging. Not to worry, in this video, we'll cover the five best Sony cameras for shooting video with an option for any price range. So let's jump into it. We're gonna break things down into five different pricing categories that you can see here. Also keep in mind that the prices we cover are going to be body only. So make sure to budget for a fast lens if you're building your video kit from scratch. All right. Let's jump into it. Let's start with our first pick in the sub $1,000 category, the Sony ZV-E10. The ZV-E10 is specifically catered to vloggers and content creators. The 24 megapixel APS-C mirrorless camera delivers powerful features and can record 8-bit video at 4K, 30 frames per second, or 1080 HD video at 120 frames per second. It's got one SD card slot, a microphone and headphone port, and has a micro HDMI for video output. It's also got a built-in microphone that provides decent quality audio for recording. The ZV-E10 also offers some of the best autofocus tracking with face and eye detection that is well integrated into the user interface. Its battery life overall is excellent for its price and size. However, the ZV-E10 does not come without its quirks. It can have a significant jello effect in 4K video while you're panning, doing quick movements. Also, its LCD touchscreen is not very responsive and is a bit limited in use. The camera also lacks an in-body image stabilization system and has a heavy 1.44x crop if you're using its electronic image stabilization. So you kind of lose a quarter of the frame available if you have the digital image stabilization turned on. Also, if you're just recording a regular 4K capture at 30 frames per second, it does have a 1.2 times sensor crop. So it kind of can reduce the amount of detail that you're able to capture compared to other cameras. But for $700 and having an interchangeable lens option, it's a solid high quality video camera. All right, now let's move up a bit to our next budget range, $1,000 to $2,000. Our pick for this one is the Sony FX30, which is a camera with a lot of cinema quality features at a very affordable price point. It's got an APS-C sensor and can record 4K video at 120 frames per second or 1080 video at 240 frames per second in 10-bit color depth. So you got a lot more latitude later on in post-production. The FX30 also features five axis in-body image stabilization, so you can shoot stable video footage without having to sacrifice any of the image space being cropped out for a digital image stabilization. The camera has two CF Express card slots for reliable and fast storage, plus a microphone input and audio output for using headphones to monitor your audio. It's got full HDMI port, and on that you can send 16-bit raw video to an external recorder like an Atomos. It also has features that you would find in higher-end cinema cameras in Sony's line, like LUTs from their cinema line and recording in various Sony log modes. It also has a sturdy build quality and lots of mounting points to attach a rig or various accessories. And at just $1,800, it is a powerful, portable, cinema quality camera. Now let's say you want to move a little bit up in budget. At this price point, we have our first full frame camera, the Sony a7 IV. Now this is a studying photo and video camera that comes from the well-tested a7 line of cameras. The a7 IV can capture 4K 10-bit videos internally at 60 frames per second or regular HD videos at up to 120 frames per second. It's got five axis in-body image stabilization. Storage wise, it's got one SD card slot and one CF Express slot. Full HDMI output, USB-C interface. The USB port also lets you charge or power the camera via external batteries or AC power. It's phenomenal in low light and has some of the best autofocus that you'll find on any camera. Though there have been some comments that the eye detection on the A7 IV is not as good as it was on the A7 Three. Updated ergonomics on the a7 IV, which allows for much better shooting of videos. So full frame sensor, 10-bit high quality video internally, or that 60-bit RAW that you can export over HDMI. And it is both a great hybrid camera for solid photos and videos, only $2,500. All right, so let's move up in budget a little bit more. We've got another pick from Sony's cinema camera line, the Super 35 Sony FX3. So the FX3 records in 4K at up to 120 frames per second and regular HD at up to 240 frames per second. Like other cameras, it also has in-body image stabilization. This one has two CF Express card slots, also has 3.5 millimeter microphone input and a headphone output, but it does come with a handle that you can mount on top of the camera, which has two XLR microphone inputs, so you can connect pro level mics straight into the camera. It's got a full HDMI port, which can also send out raw 16-bit 4K video 
to a compatible recording device like an Atomos 422 10-bit internal recording with S-Log options, and you have the ability to record proxies on the second card so you can edit faster. It's got Sony's awesome hybrid autofocus and improved cooling so you can record long takes without worrying about it overheating. Now, despite the high-end processor and super high quit video quality, it does lack a lot of features that you would think you would find on a cinema level video camera like waveforms, spectroscopes, false colors, but still small package, super 35 sensor, two XLR inputs and only $3,900. It's a solid small cinema package that does a lot. And lastly, price is not an option. Our $5,000 plus budget range pick, we've got the Sony FX6. Now this is a full featured video camera from Sony Cinema Line. Being a dedicated video camera, you get more inputs, more outputs, more buttons to quickly control settings and change things. This is a full frame sensor camera. It can capture 4K DCI video at 60 frames per second or Ultra HD 4K at 120 frames per second in 10 bit color. You get your full HDMI output plus a 12G SDI output, which is a port that you start seeing as you go up in quality with camera body builds. This one also has two built-in XLR inputs, dual CF Express slots, built-in ND filters, and you'll find those video-specific features that were lacking in the FX3, like waveforms, vectorscopes, histograms. You'll find that inside the FX6. Now, if there was a downside to pick about this camera, unlike the smaller cameras that we covered, this one does not have built-in in-body image stabilization, but that's because you'd most likely be using this on some type of professional rig, like a shoulder mount rig or a tripod or a dolly or slider. At just under $6,000, I think it's one of the best bargains from Sony's cinema lineup and a better deal than some of their more expensive cinema cameras. And that's it. Top five Sony cameras for any budget. I hope that explained and cleared up some things and helps you navigate if you're in the market to buy a new Sony camera. Let me know what you think of the picks and if you have your own recommendations down in the comments below. If you found this video useful, pay it forward and give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. And check out our other playlist with other camera roundups from other manufacturers and more recommendations. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.